Hello and welcome back to another gameplay review. Uh, my name is Iken and today we're going to dive into the Dark Grim World of Gord, a freshly released game that is out since just a few days and I figured I'll give it a sneak peek for you. We're going to have as always a one or two parter of gameplay and then some proper game review. So for full disclosure I've played through the tutorial of the campaign and we're entering the game on the actual second mission. Now a couple of words uh, around Gord. Gord is difficult to put into one category itself. I would say it is a mixture of a simulation combined with uh, tactical elements and a little bit of darkest dungeon feel in terms of sanity. The game resolves around the idea of kind of a northern kingdom, which isn't uh, further specified. And said northern kingdom is soon to be captured by a larger army and be peace. In the meantime, since the army since, uh, seems to be still very busy in the southern kingdom, again not specified, uh, you, uh, the player, are the herald or the chosen of the Im Imperator and uh, you're supposed to lead a small group of settlers into that uh, darkness just kind of to pave the way, so to speak, for the larger army to come. We are going to load a campaign scenario, uh, in this case the one that I have played before. And again, to set the scene. To live like wild animals. And although they can be violent, conquest was one of the many human things they despise. Nonetheless, they became more aggressive recently and attacked the tribe at the Dawn's Gourd. I wonder if they are doing this to praise Velas. Right. So that's actually the story in the very first um, tutorial scenario. You've just gathered your people and started to kind of build up a small structure, which is called a gourd. And uh, unfortunately, a rivaling tribe, also known as the Wild Folk, has been attacking another gourd uh, that was built a little bit westwards. And that's where the scenario is going to start. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the game itself and we're uh, going to go right into action. So a couple of uh, the viewers have been asked it, uh, to be drafted. You wouldn't have guessed that you will be drafted in this game, but you get what you ask for. So we have John Caballero here, um, who is going to be a pretty much uh, scout slash warrior in the, in the background. We do a fiddler here. We do have Doya, Murubenu, and we have Xenotath as well as Krabi. So here's the thing, let's shortly talk about just the characters. This game has a lot of depth and I just wanted to highlight a little bit of that depth uh, before we go into combat and then I'll talk a bit more about the city itself. So characters do have health, you can see they are differing uh, a little bit from character to character. I've picked the ones for our loadout that have the highest health and the best primary attacks, so the most damage. Some of them do more and some of them do less damage. Sanity is the yellow bar that you will see over here, whilst health is the red bar that you see over here. Apparently, I've read through the game tutorial, when your health drops to zero, you become unconscious and then you can be finished off, but you can also be kind of recovered. So it's not automatically a death when you're going uh, unconscious. However, sanity is a bit of a different beast when sanity uh, reaches low levels and there are various uh, influence factors that uh, contribute to that, whether or not people are in light, whether they have enough to eat, whether it's sanitary. So it's actually a quite complex formula. Once uh, their sanity, uh, sanity starts to drop, they start becoming insane and that can have any form of uh, continuous lasting effect. I think about Darkest Dungeon. Most of the characters or all of the characters actually come with some sort of strength or benefit. In Fiddler's case for instance he will get sanity 
when he's in combat because he's a martial artist but he fears Palos. Whatever that is, I haven't figured out yet. Doja, on the other hand, has a flair for fighting, gains more experience, but has a reduced uh, range of exploration. Xenotaph is faster in forest, but unfortunately incredibly lazy and therefore builds slower. Krabby is zealous, uh, so also she gets um, not sanity, but faith, and we'll come to faith in a second. And she cannot stand idle, she needs to uh, continue working. And then we do have good old John Calabro, who gains sanities whenever we're reaching a point of interest. And he's unfortunately a bit of a lavish spender and uh, consumes gold faster. The one thing that I should highlight is in the first scenario I got an item because we needed to free a scout. And uh, the item, every single character can, uh, can get up to three items. This item in particular uh, allows you to take less damage from wolves and deal more damage against wolves. It's the paw of a legendary wolf. So there is a bit of a cool outlook of things uh, to come. Uh, in terms of just uh, spa uh, selecting and spacing the characters, it works like a real-time strategy uh, game. Uh, a little bit like Dragon Age, if I had to compare it in, in terms of uh, its functionality. Or a little bit like Pathfinder uh, before they introduced the turn-based combat scenario. So you will need to uh, hit pause from time to time. Um, anyways, before we're going into that, this is the Gond um, Westwards, and we'll talk about the structures and the buildings. But before we can do that, is uh, we need to double check what happened here because these guys, the Wild Folk, have breached our Gond over here. Uh, the uh, barricades have been breached, and they leave us no other uh, chance or possibility other than actually going to town with them. Good. Combat is on. I uh, put a bit of a bit of a pause in here. Frontline and uh, everybody focus on this guy. Good, one down. You three over here. Go get this guy. You two, take this guy. Good, another one down. We do have uh, Zeno here, who has taken a bit of damage. Let's pull him back in good m m micromanage uh, fashion. Gets around the flank. And hits the guy. dare to destroy our king's property by the way um, Edwin here is kind of uh, the king's emissary he is uh, the guy that really is unlikable and the game does a fantastic job in portraying him Sire, as such this is unusual the wild folk are not our allies but they were never desperate enough to raid a fortified gourd something's changed All right, and I'm curious to understand what has changed. That doesn't matter, you old fool. They will pay for their insolence. For their insolence, of, of course. Of course, sire. But now we need to focus on salvaging whatever's left of our structures. We can repair the damage, and clean up the rubble, and reuse whatever we can. Good. So, how do we repair? Uh, structures can be damaged or destroyed during battle. Uh, with enough resources, the subject can repair and clean up the rubble. Alright, good. Well, we're going to figure out how that is going to work. Up here, you do have a little bit of a pause button. So, I would say... You, got, uh, you are... Uh, Xenotaph is lazy, so he's not good in building. Um... Krabby is going to build up uh, the barracks, 
uh, we are having John over here repairing what is this um, oh wow we gotta repair a lot well good job you have to repair that the treasury yes that is important so let's talk it let's talk before we uh, start repairing everything let's talk a little bit about the building structures in general so there are a couple of resources wood uh, then reed food and gold those are the four resources and apparently later you can trade for clay and for iron so wood and reed in various forms are used in order to build the uh, different buildings the thatchery allows uh, you to gather a kind of uh, seaweed over here and do and convert it into reed the forager's hut um, allows you to select uh, little mushrooms and create food and the lumber mill over here allows you to basically deconstruct trees and with deconstructed trees um, put them uh, fell trees and put them into the wood storage the food is the only thing that automatically is going to be consumed every single time uh, so we need to be careful and make sure that that is happening xenotaph here uh, has a very low amount of health uh, health can be regained by specifically resting and doing nothing or by healing but we don't have the healing building yet so I think you gotta uh, just suck it up um, and maybe start becoming a forager so that would be helpful doja helps building that up and fiddler you help over there all right so that did not work exactly as I wanted let's try again The Palisades uh, is the ground defense. Yeah, I do understand that. I just want to repair it. So what's the problem with repairing? Apparently nothing. back so for a full report uh, it wasn't my fault uh, the palace actually could be repaired but only after I restarted the entire scenario so I needed to rename everybody redo the fight and so on and so forth for a finalized game that is quite unacceptable I uh, simply had the problem of that no matter how often I clicked on it it didn't work out but since this is a real showcase of a uh, game uh, that can happen from time to time anyways back to our options here we want to uh, repair most of the buildings that had been breached and then slowly but surely kind of rebuild our carbon we gotta be uh, careful our gourd sorry uh, we gotta be careful here is time is of the essence we only have 170 food so really that could look pretty bad if we're if we're not quick for now uh, let's make sure everybody can help a little bit at least repairing whatever uh, we do have available and i'll shortly talk about the different buildings so apparently you can only have four people on repair at a time that is okay just double checking there is nothing else we need to do we can already start going there crabby our defenses are up but we should equip our subjects with proper weapons to better prepare for what awaits us outside of our walls let us build our first military structure 
Very good. So we got the option for a military structure, and we're going to do that in a second. But I wanted to just talk you through what we do have. So we uh, do have the hatchery here. Uh, the hatchery. Apparently, the game will not shut up until we actually build a military structure. The good old axe pit. Let's put that here. Everybody goes to work. Mm -hmm. Good. In the meantime, whilst everybody's working, I just wanted to showcase a couple of things. Number one, we do have the thatchery here. I already mentioned it. That, that building will allow us to get the reed uh, from these watery shelves right there. So it's one resource. We're pretty low on it. Secondly, we have a forager's hunt, um, so that will help us to get all of the mushrooms in order to help building up a solid um, food foundation. This will go down quite rapidly. And thirdly, we do have a lumber mill to assign uh, someone uh, for a certain task. You're just essentially clicking on the building and letting uh, them work on it. So whilst uh, they are building something else crabby here becomes our first lumberjack and how it generally works is you do have uh, the building and normally if you click once on it it should open the actual building a kind of uh, little description but anyways, it shows you where they are going to harvest next. And for now, we're just going to fall uh, and fell all of the trees inside of the camp. Afterwards, they're going outside. And really, as long as they are within kind of uh, the torch range, everything's scutchy. The moment that that does no longer happen, we do have a problem. So now the game wants us to get an axe wielder going. Fiddler, who also was the one with the wolf paw, our best warrior. Uh, with the martial artist perk is going to be exactly that uh, a warrior so what else do we want to do with the remaining ones doja here um, could for instance start helping us with food xenotarf you look like someone who wants to uh, get us a bit more of uh, these reeds and since we need much more uh, equipment at the moment uh, John um, I would urge you to start felling some trees as well that way we get the material to actually build up everything so that's good enough let's search for the cartographer he was supposed to lay out the best route for the gold transportation especially across that damn river my people have seen this Calanthian a couple of times. Supposedly, he has surrounded himself with traps. Be cautious when you approach his hut. Okay, fair enough. But I don't yet want to uh, go and get the cartographer. I want a solid economy first. So, the problem with... Um, with anyone leaving the hut uh, or the gourd here is that many of the resources and especially the reed and the mushrooms are outside and they are potentially dangerous so you gotta have an eye on uh, on the uh, villagers that are going to go through with these tasks in this case Zeno here and Doja here are a little bit in danger as long as we do have um, trees inside of the gourd, we're actually fine. And you can see we're now getting some nice wood uh, here. Uh, the, this is the vision range and this here is the hearing uh, range of everyone. I don't know what Fiddler is doing at the moment, uh, but I would urge you to help and switch professions. We need more food. Because if we want to do an exploration later down the road, I actually would like us to be well fed. Good, you can see we've now uh, 
removed the only tree that was available which means they are starting to move a little bit further and since everything is automated this can lead to a bit of a dangerous scenario because look at that these guys are pushing forward into territory just to try to get some mushrooms here that could easily become a problem also another uh, effect that I wanted to highlight is they are still sort of in daylight but you will see that the Xeno here and the Xeno here has already started taking some sanity damage so the longer they are in the dark the worse it becomes for them and we gotta really watch out that that's not going to be a big problem later down the road specifically uh, the reed gathering um, uh, uh, participants will often suffer a lot of uh, penalties on their sanity. I've, I've seen that in the first scenario so part of the game is to micromanage all of uh, that and my initial impression just by playing through it is a couple of cool features but it is quite cumbersome uh, to look after each and every one I mean, having only five people in the uh, in the gourd definitely helps, but it is so easy for one of them to just like move further here, and then they trigger wolves or whatever. And I'm not sure if they can even outrun them, to be entirely f uh, fair. So that might create a lot more problems in the future. You can see Fiddler here, for instance, is running rampage to the north just to get some more mushrooms because that's the only thing that we can do in order to gather at the moment. Let's pause for a second and take a look at the building. So we do have a lumber mill, right? Uh, we do have a thatchery. Okay, we do have a forager's hut. And I'm wondering, can we somehow upgrade these things? No, that's just build, rebuilding them. I know that you can upgrade them, but I'm not 100% sure how. But I suppose we're not at that point in the game yet. So we can build additional gates uh, for 100 extra lumber. Well, currently the gate is fine. I guess that's okay. Uh, we can build spider carvings, small decorative, sole purpose is to raise uh, the sanity. We're okay on sanity, so we don't need that yet. We do have a scout tower down here. Uh, scouts can equip uh, your villagers with uh, torches and then you can essentially have a scout together with a couple of resource gatherers and they're just kind of protecting them from sanity drain. So we can't really do anything like exceptional at this point. I would love to upgrade some of the buildings. But apparently that is not possible yet. Well, let's continue the gathering and see what's going to happen. It seems we do have decent amounts of woods, but our reed production is lacking behind quite a bit. So once we have a bit more food available, I think we're going to just help uh, the guys get more read. And then we're going to put people into fighting mode plus scouts and we're actually going to scout for uh, that guy, the cartographer. For full Transparency, the cartographer, uh, cartographer is uh, the one uh, that our emissary wants us to rescue. That's the reason why we came here in the first place. Apparently, he has caused some issues. Good, no one has lost a lot of sanity. I know in the first instance there was a sanity building, uh, but we haven't found that yet. But we got a new building called the Hunter's Den. Uh, to uh, that allows us to slay some prey some game let's place that there John you're the one that is going to build this and we still need more reed 
and I've already found out that there had been some uh, some deer over here so that's a possibility for us to gain more food uh, that is what's uh, really lacking at the moment I'm just trying to get enough food for us to stabilize let's fast forward a bit so far not much is happening other than these two pranksters needing to go ever so uh, further to the north in order to gather good slow this down again and i think we're going to take that uh, second additional gate over here Should also produce some more light in this direction, which is good. Okay, so You can see all of a sudden they are starting to gather over here, which is great. And 250 food should be good enough for now. Let's just fill up uh, both reed and uh, wood, just so that we can build something if it's needed. And then we'll take it from there. John, you've done a fantastic job. How about uh, you start gathering some more reed? Good, got two nice entrances into our gourd now. And we're slowly but surely are gathering more and more. Good, Fiddler. You become a um, woodsmith now. We need more wood. And... Once we do have both of these a little bit higher, we should be fine. I'm surprised. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What just happened? We got Mikino. Is that a child? <laughs> okay. Apparently someone uh, has created a child. Uh, I know how that happened, so I will, I will not uh, ask how exactly that happened. But well, that is funny, that's the first thing, uh, time that it happened. Let me just uh, quickly take a look at our... at our requests. Um, Krabby, uh, we already have you. Private Wasp, very good. So let's... Can we edit the name? No, not yet. Okay. Well, Wasp, you will need to wait. We're going to see if Medicure, aka Private Wasp, is even going to um, even going to survive that. Uh, let's let her gather some food. How about that? I don't think that children can do a lot here. I would be surprised. Now nah, she's mostly just following the others around. <laughs> okay. It's funny though, nonetheless. Good. Um, let's get everybody together. Not sure if it's a good idea to have Milicho with us here. Uh, you three go there and you two go there because we're now going to explore. On the other hand, 
she's potentially more safe with the others than with anyone else. It's not a she, it's a son, okay. All right. Well, let's hope we're not going to lose anyone in battle. So, as you can see, I'll pause again. Uh, two of our characters, Zeno and John, are now carrying torches. So we made them uh, essentially scouts. Whilst Fiddler, Doja, and Krabby are uh, going to be the axe wielders. I know they are trained for brutal direct assault. Oh, cool. Primary attack went up. That's good. Oh yeah, primary attack went up substantially. I like it. Good, let's explore carefully. Uh-oh. Some wandering something. Wandering teacher. All right. Teaching costs. Um... Oh, I didn't see you there, youngling. Do you f uh, also feel the urge to explore and study everything around you? No. Well, still, if you want to learn something new, I'm sure I can teach you anything you need for the right price, of course. So apparently we got 160 gold at the moment. And Ken Fiddler. Fiddler could get trading experience. Doja could get... Trading experience. Zeno could get. Trading experience. Krabby could get. Trading experience. Three. Okay, but that already costs 90. And John here could get trading experience. Three. Interesting. Um, let's buy trading experience two. And this guy apparently is just living in the woods alone. We see a, sh a shed over there. That is um, a little cage over there, not a shed. Uh, that might be where the cartographer is being capped. But I'm pretty sure they won't let him go uh, politely. All right, so. Front line. Oh, wow. We are hurting the wolves bad. I like it. Mik uh, Mikio in the background has th thrown a single stone. That was funny. suffered so much seeing a body mutilated in such a vicious manner you would think that living here made us indifferent to such views but it always takes a toll your barbarian minds are weak and this corpse belongs to yet another of your scouts no sire judging from the robe I believe this is the cartographer you were searching for. Mm-hmm. Cursed lands. Ah, forget him. We need his maps. Search the hut. Search this cage. Search everything. Well, pleasant as always, isn't he? The subject's health drops to zero, 
they will experience a physical affliction that can be healed by a hermit. If the sanity drops to zero, they will um, have a mental affliction. Sorry. We have found the cartographer's notes in his hut. Does it say where to cross the river? I believe it does, my lord. But the marked route requires crossing the nearby swamps. It's a very difficult and dangerous area. You dare to question the expertise of a royal cartographer? If he marked it, that's where we're going. Follow the plan, steward. We... All right. Let's see. There is something over here. Treasure, a treasure chest. And... Calibro has a wolf a tooth necklace. Uh, only usable by subjects with any experience at level 3. 20% attack range. I like what I'm seeing. Good job. Let's get to that other cage, shall we? Uh-oh. Oh, oh, that will be a tougher fight. Good cycle, but there is no backing down. All right, come on. Let's use uh, this choke point right here. Someone has harmed our brother. Very good. One down. Uh, focus on this guy. Very good. Focus on this guy. Very good. Focus on this guy. Nice. Pile of gold. What else do we have? Fiddler. Forest grave. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Look at that. We got... Um, Solveig here. Daughter of Magni. And what does she bring to the table? Brafer's Mimics. I uh, haven't seen one. And hates Foulspawn. But does a good attack and uh, seems overall competent with 200 hit points. Wow, do we have that many hit points? No, she seems like a tank. Can I somehow order these guys? No, cannot. Got a lot of faith here. Okay, I like that exploration part, but I think given that we have a new building, uh, let's go back, get some sanity, get everything in order. Because boy, we have uh, just killed a r rivaling tribe of wildlanders. Trying to explore to make sure that there are no wolves around. Uh oh. No, no, not our child. Our brother has been in. Shit. Yet again. Everybody focus on this flank. Good, some more gold. 
some more food and the person unfortunately was already dead I like the exploration part of it okay sanity is still looking okay and I think our our overall health is still looking okay as well so just double checking the riverbank here I'm mainly doing that to prevent kind of later wolf attacks we need more gold if we want to keep our military units are you kidding me Traveling merchant, all right. Oh, okay, well. Excellent bag. Uh, only for foragers, warm clothing. All of that costs gold, so we need a means of getting gold. So back into the town we go. And... Let's sort out what we want to do. Okay, for starters, we do have Fiddler here, and we do have Fiddler here. Fiddler, you become a Forager. Doja, you become a Forager. Zeno, we need Reed. Krabby, we need Reed. Um, I don't know what a child can do. Hmm. Let's... No, I can't do anything. John, you become a hunter and you become a gatherer. All right, this should give us plenty of resources. Everybody is slowly leaving the town. So, what are our options? For starters, we need an additional gate. And apparently, Miko can build at least. So, it's a start. I like that. The very literal definition of child labor right there. But I guess if you're trapped in a swamp and it's do or die, then every pair of hands is helpful. Good. What else can we build? Fishing shack for more food. Hunter's den, we already got that. We got... The metery is not bad. I had that in the first scenario. It allows you to regain uh, sanity. But I'm still looking for a way of uh, getting gold because currently, as it stands, we're out of gold. So no more special military operation here. Oh, nice. And there is an archery range as well. So we could actually um, have a couple of archers as well. Yeah, the next big thing that we're going to build is the metery, but we need more lumber for that. Apparently the hunting is super helpful in comparison to the um, food income from uh, the, uh, from uh, the mushrooms. This is 50 instead of 24. 25. No, 30, sorry. Apparently it's 30 and this one here is 50. Good. Got a new entrance.
I would like to build a bit further. So let's assign a third person uh, to cutting down trees. How can I switch? How can I switch uh, the area? I, I know they have uh, shown that in a tutorial, but I have sort of forgotten it. And the information panel does not open anymore. Hmm, that's unfortunate. Oh, look at that. We got another child. Twayla. Okay. So, our crew is productive, shall we say. Um... They have nothing else to do. Apparently, they are going to town with one another. Good. Meadery. Start there. And build it, children. Oh. Mikno has become an adult. Look at that. He's no longer a child. Which means... My friend, you can now become a hunter, for instance. And in typical fashion, we're going to continue child labor. Our source of food has been depleted. What, 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 where? Uh, that's not good. So... Back to gathering mushrooms, I suppose. So we killed all of the deer. Next up, I think we need a fishing uh, shack, but we can't build that outside of uh, the walls here. This is the food corner, trying to put everything together. And something seems to be over here. Okay, we're going to explore that the next time, but we need more gold first. We're doing okay on food, I guess. Not grandiose, but okay. And the gourd here is growing. Quite a bit. I wonder how we are going to just increase the size up and upgrade the buildings. We now have the option for a storehouse. Increase the maximum amount of resources that you can possess. Sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Good, and everything seems to be costing quite a bit of resources to build. Let's fast forward a little bit. Whaler here is moving over. Miko, the firstborn son, is switching to become a fisher. Our brother is being Xeno, what is happening? All right. Everybody. Come on. 
you know. Run, 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 run. Our no. brother has been knocked out. Not good. All right, hit these guys. All right, Twain, can you help revive him? Our brother is on his death. Alright, Zeno almost didn't make it. Hmm, that was close. Our brother's health has collapsed. Good. What uh, did Zeno get? An affliction. Frail heart. The subject loses a large proportion of their maximum health. They might be knocked out immediately. Does he permanently have that condition? Not good. All right, we had a building. We had a building that could help. Um, hmm. We got enough gates. I need a temple or some sort of healing. Okay, now upgrade that. Advanced buildings. Yeah, here. This is what we needed. Balia. Balia is for healing the wounded. That's exactly what we need. So. We're missing lumber. Okay, fair enough. Guys, come to the center. We got a bit of an announcement to make. We've already been going for quite a while and this is a two-parter so there's going to be a cliffhanger here after Xenotab has almost bid, uh, bid it we are going to pause it here and we're going to see a second part if you enjoyed the gourd so far leave a comment and a like down below as always if uh, enough people want to see an actual playthrough of the game then feel free to let me know about that. If there is enough garnered interest, then of course we could give it a go. I have no idea if the game is any good. This is kind of the hardest difficulty to play on. Uh, so might as well give it a try if you guys are all up for survival, quote unquote, horror medieval games. See you in the next episode. Um, love to hear your comments and bye bye.